Hi again everyone, time to bring you all up to date with the layout. So since my last update, all I've really been doing is motorising points. Uh, on my old layout, I motorised the points kind of gradually. Um, I, uh, then I went around and changed them from surface mounted motors, but uh, I never did get them all done. A couple of them still had surface, mo uh, surface mounted motors. Um, you know, lifting a, a point and swapping out the motor once the, the point's been ballasted isn't fun. Um, this time I've been fitting point motors to all the points from the get-go, which has been a bit of a tedious task to be honest. A lot of groveling around under the boards, running wires and fixing wires to other wires to connecting blocks and stuff. I massively underestimated the amount of wire I would need, so I had to order more. My wiring's a real mess at the moment, but once it's all done it'll get tidied up. I just like to keep it um, loose and movable at this stage. So I thought in this video I'll show you fitting the last point motor, number 19, and that's to this point here, uh, which I've decided to add in to give me a sneaky wee siding in here. Um, and I know I said in my last video that there would be no more changes to the track plan, but there you go. I just thought I'd squeeze this little siding in. Right, let's fit this last motor so I can get on with the next stage of building the layout. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just draw a line around the position of this point. Um, I've lost my black marker pen. I don't know what I've done with it. I have looked everywhere. I don't know where it's gone. I hate losing things. It happens all the time. It's usually scissors. But anyway, just use this to now. So what I want to do is, this is the point motor that will be going in. So I just want to just mark the polystyrene on either side of where the motor is mounted. Just roughly. And now we can remove the point. And I'm going to use this hot wires tool just to cut uh, a little pit for the motor. Just like that. Like so. Take that out. And I'm just going to drill a hole for the wire through the baseboard. These are old Pico point motors, I've got a job lot of them cheap off eBay. Um, I put a little spot of oil in there just to uh, make sure that that moves back and forward nice and freely. So we'll fit this on to the underside of the point. If you look at a point you'll see there's little slots in this bit here and that's uh, where you plug in these little prongs on the point motor. It doesn't really matter which way you go, I like to do it with the, uh, the red and green wires facing the, the rest of the point. So, just get two of those lugs in. So, push the lugs in and then I have to get this rod to go through the little hole there. That can be a bit of a fiddle, but if you get one side of the motor in, it's easier to just get that in position like that and then push those through on the other side. Can be a wee bit of a fiddle this. There we go. So with that plugged in, what you want to do is just give the ends of these a wee twist just to secure the motor to the point. So there we go, that's the motor mounted, and that should now work the point. So the next thing I like to do is just to put some tape, just any kind of tape, um, just underneath either side of the motor. Um, and that is just to uh, help when you add ballast. If you're not adding ballast, you don't need to do this. But just, put, but just putting tape there will stop ballast falling through. So I'll put another piece on here. Like so. So now when that's in position, the ballast won't fall through into the motor too much. It always does a little bit, um, but it should sit there between those sleepers uh, with the tape keeping it in place. So now I have to feed the wires through the hole in the baseboard. Uh, to do that, I use a pokey stick, 
put a bit of tape on the end and then stick the wires onto the end. Like that. And then poke the stick through the hole. I have to go onto the board and pull it through. that. So we can now refit the point on the track. And I'm just going to put some more tape over the hole there, either side of the point. And again, that's just to stop ballast and stuff falling down into the hole. So now I just need to connect up the wires. The black wire uh, will connect to one of these that I've got screwed under the baseboard. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to my video on how to wire multiple points on a DC layout because essentially I'll be doing the same thing but uh, instead of the bus wire I use one of these but other than that it's the same. The red and the green wires will connect to one of these lever switches. Now instead of uh, these horrible little plugs which always come out and they're a real pain in the neck. I've actually fitted uh, M2.8 screws. I found that they fitted in there just fine. And they, these are actually screwing into the copper terminals inside there. So all I need to do is uh, strip the, the red and green wires, wrap them around and uh, screw them up. And it uh, does away with the need for these little plugs. So there's the black wire going to the connector block and all the other wires going to the other points. And that's the wire going back to the controller. I've put a connector on the red and green wires, so we'll take a wire from those back to the switch. So here's the extension of my red and green wires. Just put them under here, poke them up through this hole. So I'm leaving plenty of slack in the wire because when I come to tidy them up, I'll uh, use cable tie to, to bunch them all together. So we shall Cut those. Whether you have the red wire in the top terminal and the green on the bottom or vice versa, um, kind of depends on which way you want the point set in relation to the, the switch. For me, when uh, the switch is at rest, just uh, forwards like that, I like the point to be set to go straight on. And because this is our left hand point, uh, we'll put the green wire on the top. So wrap that round. Ideally, I'd fit little terminals to solder the wires to and then screw them in. But this works. Screw the screw in and that will be fine. Certainly a lot more secure than those little plugs. So I just need to fit the red wire on and that should be us. So with the green and red wires attached, we just plug this in to the other switches. Switch on the power and that should operate the point. So there we are, that's all 19 points motorised. It's a bit of a tedious job to do, especially when you're working on points that are far away from the switches. It's a lot of wiring. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, wire up the shuttle for my end-to-end -end line here. I'll probably just use my existing shuttle unit here. Um, but I will look into other ones. So we'll get that wired up and operational. And then after that, I've got to turn this section here into a removable section. Now it won't be like the, the lift out section um, but I just want to make this so I can remove it if, if need be. So I'll need to cut the track, connect up each uh, section of track. Um, just probably just going to use plugs or connectors or something. Um, so you know if I do want to remove this it'll be a, be a wee bit of an operation but at least it'll, you know, it'll be possible. Um, so yeah I think that's that'll be the job after the shuttle and after that um, I start gluing the track down. Once the track's glued down, then I can start thinking about uh, which parts of the layout I'm going to build up into hills and which part I'm going to cut away, you know, for uh, rivers, roads, gullies or whatever. Um, they even cut away big chunks to leave the track looking like it's on an embankment. 
Um, I would imagine around the outside I'll build up. This corner too I think will be built up into a hill. Um, this section here I'm not quite decided on yet. I think I'm probably going to cut it away actually and lower it down. Same in here, I think I might cut away a little stream or something in there. Not, not quite decided yet. So once I've got all the landscape basically planned out and all the polystyrene in position, cut roughly to shape, um, we'll get that plastered up and modelled into how I want it to be. Um, I've got the ends of the vibe up to, to sort out as well, what I'm going to do here. So there's quite a lot of work involved. Uh, you know, between cutting the polystyrene into shape and getting it all plastered and formed how I want it to be. Also, all my sleepers will be painted. You know, I don't want uh, black sleepers, so we'll get them all painted up into just a dirty grey brown colour. And then it gets ballasted. So I've got an awful lot to do, but I'll keep you up to date on progress. One thing I'm thinking about and uh, I'd quite like your thoughts on is I was very kindly given a Hornby DCC Select controller. Now I'm going to do a separate video on that because I thought it would be quite fun to do a video of me um, attempting DCC for the very first time. Now don't panic, I am not converting to DCC, that is absolutely not happening. Um, the idea is just so I've got the ability to run a DCC fitted locomotive. So it was really just meant for the test track, but I've kind of got the idea of wiring it into the end-to-end -end on the layout. So the layout would be DC, but I would have the option to run a DCC fitted locomotive on the end-to-end -end route on the layout. I don't know, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that would work. Um, I think if I just limit it to the end-to-end -end line and nothing else, I think it'll be fine. It'll just be a case of switching it on and switching it off. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. But I will do a separate video on that select controller um, just for a bit of a laugh. Another thing I've done, as you can see, I've got some shelves behind me for uh, some of my stock. I think I'll uh, Fit a couple of shelves up here as well, and uh, I've got myself a little swivel stool, um, which is great for watching the trains going round, so I can uh, basically burrow myself around and make myself feel sick. Right, okay, folks, catch us later.